Hello and welcome to this video. Here's how you can create and import your own wavetables to the Behringer Wave. I'm using WaveEdit from the company Synthesis Technology and you can download it for free on the internet. It's pretty simple. So you can start right off with these buttons here. I don't know, digital analog FM glitch. Let's say we go to the FM and choose one waveform. There you have it. And then you go to the next slot. So here you see um, the wavetable slots, like for the single waves. And you can create uh, 64 from 0 to number 63. That's 64 in total, which is pretty handy because the wave is using um, exactly this format with 64 waves in one wavetable. And uh, yeah, you can just go through, keep adding stuff. Let's say uh, you add this one and this one and so on. And um, then you have some controls here where you could just uh, alter the sound of the wave. Let's say uh, you add a bit of ring modulation to this. Okay, that's not very, very usable. You can add your harmonics here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty ugly. <laughs> You can randomize it, so yeah, um, you can do a lot, and um, yeah, I'm just filling it, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so here's how it looks like now, and now you can save the bank. So the wavetable is named Bank in uh, Wave Edit, and uh, yeah, you can give it a name or just save it, and then. Yeah, then you can use the Behringer Synthstripe app and the wave needs to be connected via USB. And um, yeah, then it will be uh, recognized by the software and you go to the wavetable tab and here you can import the sound you just made. Um, let's see where I have it. Okay, it's here. Yeah, and then you need to define the number of samples. Um, wave edit is using... Um, a frame length of 256 samples per um, cycle. So set the number to 256 and then you can see there's a full wave cycle and you can, yeah, for each wave and you can just scroll through and see if everything is fine. And then um, you can send it, yeah, set the resolution 16-bit or 8-bit. Let's say we set it as 16-bit and you can set the destination. So, um, yeah, here you see a list for um, the transients and which are open here, which are uh, uh, unused. And then the wavetables are, yeah, like uh, here you have a lot of slots which are free. Um, but I'm not saving it to the device, I'm just using the wavetable listen buffer. And then I press send takes a bit, a few seconds, and then it appears in the device. So now you see um, the wave appears empty now. And that means this is the wavetable I've, I've just uh, transferred to the Behringer wave. And yeah, you can listen to it here. With this knob I can go through all 64 waves. Yeah. So and I can um, I can uh, uh, morph through these wavetables um, using the ADSR envelope, for instance. Um, with this knob, envelope one, two waves. You just uh, set the point. Um, yeah, where the wavetable scanning starts. So the sustain is all the way up. That means um, if I turn this knob up, fully up, um, it will, uh, yeah, we will listen to the last wave in the wavetable. See? So if I set it to the last wave, same. 
and yeah and um, if I turn the sustain down and use only the decay knob now it's going through all 64 waves and if I set the attack time higher then it starts um, from the beginning morphs to the end of the wavetable and back and now it goes back yeah okay and we can we can use this behavior now um, maybe set the attack time a bit longer um, also raise the release time of the envelope of the amp envelope see yeah sounds a bit robotic but nonetheless it's pretty cool and uh, for me it's pretty cool <laughs> i don't know what you think and then um now you see we're in oscillator mode one which emulates the original firmware this means um you will experience a bit more aliasing in the lower registers um and also you hear this step behavior between these uh, wavetables. So it's really stepping from one wave to the other, which mm, not always sounds as we want it and not always nice. Like for a pretty wild random wavetable like, like I created, um, I will rather use um, oscillator mode one. And if we... Yeah, maybe um, lower the range of the scanning and use a bit more attack time. Let's see. Ah, okay, that sounds much better now. Yeah, pretty cool. And um, with this basis knob, um, what this does... Um, each next noise uh, uh, voice goes to uh, the other side. So it starts, I don't know, the first note starts on the left and the next on the right and so on. Um, the more you set this up, the more it spreads the voices into the stereo field. Um, you can hear this. You see, it's more like a ping pong behavior now. But this is pretty cool with um, with such jumpy sounds like like this one. Yeah, I think that already sounds pretty cool. Um, now let's detune the oscillators a bit. Go to the tuning page. Detuning is set to zero. I don't know, let's set it to three. Or maybe even four. And maybe lower, lower the... Um, no, raise the... Uh, attack time of the envelope so um, the movement will be a bit slower
Okay, so now the sound is pretty wild, um, but that's not always what you want, maybe. So you could also um, turn the wavetable scanning off and just use these knobs as an offset um, to set the wavetable, yeah, to set the wave, the part of the wave that you want to hear. Uh, let's do that. <laughs> So you can alter the sound here of um, the main oscillator and the sub oscillator. Okay, so this is how you can use your own wavetables in the Beringer Wave. And um, I hope you find this video useful and see you next time. Bye.